Hi fellow mega fans. So you can see me here putting on my foundation. I've actually put on um, Gosh Line Perfector, Velvet Touch Primer, Garnier BB Cream in combination to oily skin in light. And I'm now putting on my L'Oreal True Match which is in the shade Rose Pearl. I think it's a perfect match for my skin. I'm very pale so this just seems to work pretty well for me. Excuse, I have a few little breakouts at the moment. I think it's just stress and such as that, but I'm not very well either, and that does tend to impact on my skin. So <laughs> you will see me getting up and down quite a fair bit in this video, just because I keep on forgetting things, really. And I think there I'd just forgotten my cloth for cleaning my brushes. As you know, I like to spot clean my brushes as I go, uh, just because I tend to use dark colours and bright colours quite a lot, and I don't want that to affect brushes for the next time I use them. So although we start out in this room, which is the room before the bathroom, I've shown you like a little tour of this bathroom before, this room before, sorry, um, I don't actually finish the tutorial in here. I find a new place to film and hopefully you can let me know in the comments below what you think about the new place to film. So I'm now putting on Sleek One Loose Powder. I absolutely love this loose powder. It gives a really nice finish. Um, as you can see, it's very finely milled and you can see it there just as I'm applying it to my face, kind of puffing up into the air. And I'm using my Real Techniques powder brush to apply this. I really hate how my skin looks in this video, to be honest. This light is really harsh. I'm definitely going to get a blind for that window. I think it'll make it a lot easier for me to film there. Just because it, it's because it's frosted glass. And I find frosted glass, um, it t tends to diffuse the light a lot more. I don't know, it's very strange. So this is number 7 eye primer, as you can see. Sad face. I have very much of that left to be honest. I do have one in the stock drawer, so yay for stock drawer. I actually picked that up when I had a five pound number seven voucher, so I got it for two pounds something ridiculous. Um so I didn't have anything else to purchase at that time, so I thought oh, I'm gonna pick one of those up now while I've got my voucher, which is one of my hints and tips. So I've applied that to the lids. It's my favourite eye primer. It's probably the cheapest, one of the cheapest, and I absolutely love it. So now we're moving on to using the Fashionista Brow Kit. I actually use the three colours in this kit and a setting gel. Then I tend to use the mid colour. So there's a dark brown, a mid brown and then a lighter colour. And I use the mid toned one. Or I have on this look. Sometimes if I want a more dramatic look I will go for the darker brown. And I use my Real Techniques Brow Brush to apply this as you can see here. These brushes are very distinctive with the colour of the handles. I absolutely love that about them. I think that's a great design. And I was considering getting some Sigma brushes to try, but then I was just chatting to Alec about it, and he said, well, why? He said, you're doing such an amazing job, but with those Real Techniques brushes you've got, why try other brushes when you're really happy with the ones you've got? And I think he's right. Um, I was just saying in a video the other day with the hints and tips, if you find something you really like, you don't need to then go off and buy loads and loads of other types of things, unless that particular range doesn't have something that you need. And I actually think that um, I don't have any other needs that Real Techniques isn't meeting at the moment. I hate those two little scars on the side of my face now. What am I doing now? Oh yes, right, so this is something that I tend to do and this uh, is something that I was going to mention in an upcoming video and that is um, something I've talked about in the past to be honest. Whenever I do my brows I never tweeze them unless I've actually filled them first. My brows are quite sparse on the outer edges so I like to fill in with um, either a pencil or a shadow product. I prefer shadows to be honest. But once I've filled them in then I get my tweezers and I tweeze off the hairs that are outside the lines where I normally shade. And I think I get the better job on my eyebrows doing this because if I did it without doing that, then I just think I'd end up with really strange brows. So, as you can see, we've now moved location. I'm actually sitting down on the landing part here. And I was sitting in quite a funny position, so <laughs> my back was hurting a little bit by the end of it. But I think that the lighting just seems to be a lot better here. So, I've got my hair pulled back my very unattractive <laughs> woolly scarf there, um, headband. Now in this I'm actually using the Nude Tude palette and I'm using, let me have a look, I've got my brushes right in front of me so I can tell you what I'm using. This is the shading brush. I just realised the name is starting to come off that one. That is a bit of a shame because I'll never know what they're called. <laughs> so that's the shading brush 
And from the Nude Tooth palette here, I'm using Selfish all over the lid. It's kind of a, a, a lighter brown, and it's kind of a grey, taupey coloured sort of brown. It's really nice. It's got some frost qualities to it, which looks really nice um, on the lid. Particularly if you're shading around the outer edges, you're left with that frost on the centre of your eye, and it just looks really nice. So that's just putting that on. I'm not too bothered about the edges here because I'm going to go in with a darker colour on the crease. So. so I'm just cleaning my brush off here. So you will see me doing that occasionally through this tutorial because I am very particular about doing that. Now I'm just kind of deciding what darker colour I'm going to use here. And I'm actually moving on to using, let me see, this is the base shadow brush from Real Techniques. And I watched the, when I did um, the filming the makeover for Elaine 12 Jones at MAC, I watched how the lady was doing her blending and the kind of brush she used. And this is the shaped brush that she used to actually do the dark colour and the blending of that colour. So I chose this one. And in the Nude Tude palette, this is the colour called Sleek. And it's actually just a matte, very dark brown. This is really nice. Now it looks a little strange at this moment because I'm actually just packing it in there and kind of just blending it out across the crease but then I'm going to use another brush which is the deluxe crease brush now I know the name of this one I absolutely love this brush so much and I'm going to go in with that one and I'm going to blend it out a little bit so it's not quite so harsh but I absolutely love how this shadow just goes on really nicely with this brush and it's just basically using the tip of the brush stippling it on and just very very gently feathering it out a very very light touch so I think I'm going to reach for my deluxe crease brush and I'm going to just go into the crease there and just the main thing about this is just not making some of the darker areas look quite so harsh so just blending them out slightly and blending the edges of that crease now I'm not going to blend too far because I'm actually going to use another color on the edge of the crease there we go I've actually got a better finish there close up by zooming in a little bit. I think I've probably changed this a few times and then realised yes actually that is better. <laughs> um, I know my skin doesn't look too good close up so please don't take any notes of that. Um, it's all about the eyes. <laughs> so we're blending that out and I just tend to just touch up the edges if there's any just kind of got a bit stray around the eyes I just rub with my fingers and get that off. got something so I had to get up. Eyeliners. I actually do this a few times during this video which is quite amusing. and I will get used to filming somewhere other than my desk. Basically I just put everything in a basket and took it with me but I just totally forgot some items that I needed. Um, so I had to go out and get those. So I'm taking a little bit more of the darker colour which is sleek and then I take a little bit of selfish again and I just put that in the centre of the eye just to give that a nice bit of light in the centre of the eye. And then I think I go back to slate and I just tidy up the darker areas. Yeah. Now this is actually Stand Offish and this is a lovely peachy sort of shimmery colour. Um, like a peachy pink and I actually use that on the edge of the crease and you can see it's just quite a nice little frosty colour and it just tidies up the edge of that crease by just giving it a little bit of light. I don't think my eyes are quite even here. <laughs> I did actually sort that out later. But that's the way it goes. I have difficult with my, difficulties with my vision. I wear glasses so it's very difficult for me to film without using a mirror. And I'm actually using a little mirror here but I'm holding it in a very awkward position in my other hand. Um, so I will have to get used to that. Um, but I just think that you can actually see what I'm doing a lot better here because I know that I did a winged eyeliner look and I think a portion of it I actually had um, the little mirror in front of um, the camera viewfinder. I just wiped off that little error there. So this is me going back in with Sleek with the deluxe crease brush just because I've gone with the two lighter colours and I've removed a little bit of that darkness on the edge, outer edge. So I'm just filling that back in a little bit there. And I'm cleaning that brush off now. I don't think this eye look or any eye look I do really looks anything until you've actually got your eyeliner on. 
once I've got my eyeliner on, I always feel like my eyes are a lot more finished. So just continuing to work with that dark brown, I'm just taking it round properly into the crease, further across the eye. So, um, I think it's it's not bad. I like filming here. I think I just need to work on technique a little bit better. Um, but I think that you can see what I'm doing a lot better here. And this is actually from the new Tude palette as well. This is the colour Sassy, which is a beautiful frosty white. Makes a lovely sort of brow highlight and I always apply this with fingers. I just think that I get a lot better finish if I just give that a little blend with the fingers. And I just think that just makes a really nice finishing touch to your shadow, just brightens up the eye area a lot. Sorry that you're getting a really good view of my ribs there. <laughs> Not so good. Um, right, so now I'm going to take the Bourjois Illuminate Eyeshadow in 01. This is the light, Bourjois Paris Light it's called. I suppose that's what Illuminate means. I take that on an accent brush from Real Techniques, which is the tiny little brush. And I just put that in the inner corner of the eye. Okay there, sorry about that. <laughs> Trust the phone to ring just at that moment. Um, but, right, we've moved on to the Bourjois Illuminate, or the Bourjois Light in 01, which is a lovely frosty sort of white colour. And I'm applying that with a Real Techniques um, accent brush, which I feel sure that I've just actually said, but never mind. <laughs> So, I put that in the inner corners, I just take it slightly up um, and slightly down, so it's kind of a V shape. There's never any silence in this house, sorry about that, I'm sure that's probably just the boss will put something through the door. So, I tend to blend that slightly across, put myself in the eye there. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, um, I'm just cleaning that brush off and then I'm going to move on. And I actually take a base shading brush. Is it a base shading brush? I don't know why I just question myself. I think it's a shading brush. I take a shading brush and I just kind of blend that slightly um, because I don't want it to be really super bright in this look. So I just blended that out. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to move on to line in the eyes. Just having a little check there. Yes, I'm looking for the gel eyeliner now. So we're moving on to that. Now I don't use a real techniques brush for this. I actually use the gosh and it's a 380 and it's the eyeliner brush and it's got a short handle which is fantastic for lining the eyes. And I'm using Max Fluid Jet Line Gel Fluid Line. Eyeliner. <laughs> the name totally escaped me right now. Um, it's in black track. And it's a fluid line gel, and I love this brush. It's got a nice short handle. It's easy to use, and I just think as soon as that is on, I think my eyes look so much better framed, and it's just really nice. So I just actually line both eyes first. This goes on just so smoothly. It's just really creamy. I absolutely love this product. One of my holy grail items. Um, yeah, there you go. I'm actually thinking about getting this in other colours because it's just so nice. So that's that on there. And then I'm going to take some more on the brush and I'm going to wing this out. So I actually do the top line of the V first. And then I bring it down underneath. And just fill that in. It's a little bit um, messy at the edge at the moment, but I'm not going to worry about that because I actually do go in and tidy that up with another product. Um, and it's a new product I've tried to do to, to actually do that. Now, this is the eye, this is where I had a bit of a visual problem. And it's just kind of blending that into the line you've already created across your eye. And I just kind of created a little bit more of a point on that one there. 
and they're even, so I'm happy with that job at, the, at that moment in time. Um, so, I can't remember what I moved on to next. Okay, so now I think what I did was I went in with a pencil liner. Um, and I'm actually searching in the tub for this pencil liner because these little pencils are so tiny. Look at how tiny that is. That is Zero by Urban Decay. It's 24-7 eyeliner. As you can see, it needs to sharpen. And I'm actually taking this into the waterline and across the eye. Do the other eye now. Quite awkward looking across into the mirror and then trying to check that the camera's alright and all that kind of stuff here. Uh, but I think at least you can see what I'm doing a little bit better now. So that is zero. Now here I actually decided after I did this that I think that I wanted it just a little shade darker, a bit more drama, and I'm taking it pretty much almost right to the inner corner. I'm just taking it up to where it's highlighted. I don't want to do the whole eye here. I'm trying to give it a little bit more of a softer look. So now I'm searching for Perversion. And I've actually used Perversion Liquid Liner and Perversion Pencil Liner. Now the Liquid Liner was a water, it's a waterproof liquid liner and it actually came with one of the recent palettes. Um, Urban Decay Shadow 4, I think it was, it's the one with the butterflies on. And there's another little mini pencil, and that is Perversion. It is just so tiny. So I'm going to go in for a little bit more drama with Perversion here. Um, I think that I just thought it would look better for just a little touch darker. And Perversion is definitely darker than Zero. I like that. It's got just that a little bit more drama to it there. And then I take the um, Decay Waterproof Liner, which has got a very, very fine little sort of brush tip. And that's perfect for tidying up the edges of the winged liner. And I've just... Oh, here, yeah, I was listening to music while I was doing this. And it was making the tins vibrate over there. And it was like, it's coming about, so I moved that. Okay, so now we've got the liquid liner. As you can see, that brush is so tiny, and that just tidies up that edge really, really well. So. Again, difficult when you And that just tidies that up. See, looks a lot better once I've actually done that. So sometimes if you don't get it exactly perfect with one product, just have another product there that you know that you can get a finer line on. And I think that's how I've kind of worked out how to perfect it. I can't do it perfect with just the liquid liner, it doesn't work out that way for me. But if I use gel liner first, then I can definitely figure that out a little bit better. Oh. Now this is where I was kind of figuring out if I could get a closer look at the eye area. There's my forehead. <laughs> um, but the light was quite difficult here, so it was difficult for me to see what was going on in the mirror behind. But there's my eye, very close up. So, that's the eyes actually done. Now, it's not actually done, but I do realise that in a minute. <laughs> um, right, so we're moving on to blush now. This is Dainty Doll Blusher. This is um, created by Nicola Roberts of Girls Aloud, and it's specially created for girls with pale skin. And this is a really beautiful colour. It's a lilac, and it's 001, and I don't remember the name. The downside about this packaging is it doesn't have the actual names on the back, which is just rubbish, I think. I don't think that's very good, really. But the product itself is really nice. Um, so just a really pretty lilac. And as you can see, it just really lightens up your, your whole face. 
it's actually like sort of a matte product, it doesn't have a lot of shimmer to it. Um, I really like that. And I realised here that I hadn't bronzed, um, but it doesn't really make a difference. It's already that good a blush. So I'm actually using Benefit Hula here, and I'm using the Multitask Brush from Real Techniques to apply this. I put it up on my temples, down under my cheekbones, and then down onto my jawline. And then I always dust a little bit in the middle of my forehead, down my nose, and on my chin. Because you don't just tan on the outer edges of your face, and I like a natural look. And I love this bronzer because it's a lovely sort of brown colour. And it doesn't have any shimmer to it and it just makes the skin look a really nice glow which is really nice because I have pale skin and I don't really take well to orangey toned bronzers I can tell you can tell that I've got a massive orange bronzer on my face it just doesn't look very good for pale skin I don't think so you've got to be very careful with your bronzer when you're pale and it's actually making me look jaundiced here I don't actually look like that <laughs> um you will see that shortly anyway it's just that you know, it is difficult for lighting. So now we're actually using Dallas, which is also by Benefit. It's another box of powder. I'm using the little Kabuki brush, which is from Real Techniques, and I've actually got it folded out flat. And I tend to use this as a more of a contour. So I use it under the cheekbones, I blend it in with circular sort of motions, and I take it up onto the temples as well. Trying to get some shape in my fat face. <laughs> <laughs> I really like how this looks. I think it really finishes off the hula really well. And I know I look really patchy and funny coming here, but honestly, in real life, I am not that colour. Very strange lighting in this hallway because I've got a bright bulb on here and it's got no shade on it. It's a little bit awkward. But I'm just going to have to play around with my face so that it's going to work. So now this is a Real Techniques blush brush, and I'm actually using a MAC blusher called Full of Joy. This is from the Trez Cheek collection, and this is actually a frosty lilac colour. Now, if you don't want to try, well, if you do want to try highlighters and you're a bit scared of them, you could try a frosted blush because they leave a lovely frosty highlighted sort of look on your cheeks. So I've sprayed Urban Decay all night around my eyes there to set my eye makeup, and I had forgotten my mascara, so I went and grabbed that. And I'm actually trying a new one in this video. I've never tried it before. This is Blink and Go, Long Lasting Black Mascara, and this was in a glossy box quite a long time ago. I like the packaging, it's really nice and heavy, feels substantial, and the brush is really nice. I like how it looked on my lashes, to be honest, so I'm really pleased um, that I've put that one out, but I've just chucked a few away that I've been using. Sorry that I didn't change this over here and make it a little bit clearer, but you can see I'm just putting this onto my lashes. I think it had a quite a nice effect. I wish I had better bottom lashes. Elena Belen Twelve Jones has the most amazing bottom lashes I've ever seen. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, but I don't. But I do have really long lashes. It's just that my lashes are very fine hairs. And they're not very thick. And they are a very light brown colour. So you can't actually see them very well. But you can see here when I'm applying the mascara that I do have quite long lashes. And I should really have combed them through afterwards, but I've forgotten that little Real Techniques comb. Um, sort of a brow comb with um, like an eyelash comb, but you can see there when I look down that my lashes look really nice and thick and black and long. I really like it. I think that's a nice mascara. I can't believe I haven't used it till now. But I do have quite a lot of mascaras to use and try out. So now I'm going to move on to highlighting. Now this is actually a Daniel Sandler watercolour brush and watercolour um, blusher. Now this is a blusher called Icing, but I prefer to use this as a highlight just because it is quite a light icy sort of pink and it's more of a highlight colour. So I'm just applying that across my cheeks, and then what's left on the brush goes down my nose, on my cupid's bow, and on my chin. And then I'm going to move on to doing a little bit of a V highlight, and that is um, in the brow bone and just under the eye on top of the cheekbone. 
And to do that, I'm going to use Max Silver Dusk, which was the first MAC item I ever bought. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to apply that with a Real Techniques contour brush. And I think this was the essential face kit, um, if I remember rightly. Uh, first, before I do that, I'm actually putting on MAC Press Pigment in Light Touch, just as a little bit of a shimmer there on the edge of the brown shadow, just to take the harshness off the edge there. I think I'm a little bit ahead of myself here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're going to move on to the uh, Silver Dusk, and there it goes there. So it's a V-shaped motion on top of the cheekbone and up into the brow bone. And I put a little on my lips. You can really see it there. I think I love Silver Dusk. It's just the most amazing highlight product. Just beautiful. And the good thing about it is a little bit goes such a long way, so literally it's going to last you such a long time. So definitely a good investment piece if you enjoy your highlighting products. I actually do it in a very bronzy colour as well. Um, I can't remember the name of it offhand, um, but I do have that and I really like it. So I like the way that lightens up the eye area and that area of the face and the cheekbones. I think that, that looks really, really nice. And I'm now putting on Fix Plus. I actually had it slightly facing the wrong way the first time I sprayed it, which was quite amusing. Um, and I, that little spike on my eyebrow was really annoying me. <laughs> I have. I'm literally sitting here smoothing my eyebrows out right now. Now I've actually got um, Max Fabi on my lips here. Fabi is just the most amazing colour. It looks quite dark in the tube. And then when you get it on your lips, it doesn't look quite so dark, but that's because it's a frosty sort of colour. Um, it is a frost, so you just get a lot of light reflection there, which takes away from the sort of darkness. It's sort of a mid-tone pink. And then I used my Maybelline MNY lip gloss in light pink on top. I cannot rave enough about these little mini lip glosses. So this bit here is just me and it's out of the way. I'm being a bit of an idiot. <laughs> I kept it in because it's just a little bit fun really. I was just having a little bit of a celebratory dance but um, the camera technique was a bit better. So that's it. I'll see you all soon. Bye.